Hi, this is Andy Teach, host of Andy's Awesome Adventures, and welcome to Rome, Italy. Welcome to St. Peter's Basilica and St. Peter's Square. We're going to first take a look at the exterior of St. Peter's Basilica, then see St. Peter's Square, and then go inside the basilica and see the incredible works by the Renaissance masters. Millions of people come to St. Peter's and admire the dome, the facade, the statues, the mosaics, the monuments, and the sculptures. But without knowing the history and symbolism behind them, I don't think you can fully appreciate these incredible works of art. In this video, you're going to see and hear the story behind so many of these masterpieces. It is believed that over the last 2,000 years, more Christian pilgrims have visited Rome than any other city, including Jerusalem. Built on the site where Peter was crucified, St. Peter's Basilica continues to draw millions of Catholic pilgrims to Rome every year. Interestingly, St. Peter's Basilica is not even a cathedral or the official seat of the Pope. St. John Lateran is the mother church of the Roman Catholic Church, but because of the size of St. Peter's and its location next to the residence of the Pope, most of the church's most crucial ceremonies are held here instead. The church is built on Vatican Hill across the Tiber River from the historic center of Rome, but it wasn't the first church built here. The location is highly symbolic. This was the site where St. Peter, the chief apostle, died a martyr and where he was buried in 64 AD. St. Peter is considered the first pope, so it made perfect sense for the papacy to build the principal shrine of the Catholic Church here. In the early 4th century, Emperor Constantine, the first Christian emperor of Rome, decided to build a basilica on Vatican Hill at the site of a small shrine that marked the likely location of the tomb of St. Peter. Construction of the basilica started between 319 and 322 AD. It was finally completed around 349 AD. To facilitate the construction, Part of the terrain was leveled, and the necropolis where St. Peter was originally buried was demolished. In the middle of the 15th century, the basilica was falling into ruin, and Pope Nicholas V ordered the restoration and enlargement of the church after plans by Bernardo Rossellino. After Nicholas V died, work was halted. At the request of Pope Paul V, the basilica was extended further into a true Latin cross plan by Carlo Moderno, who completed the main travertine facade in 1614. Moderno wanted the facade low enough so that the view of the dome was not obstructed. He also placed the massive columns against the walls instead of in front of the building, as Michelangelo had intended. The church was finally reconsecrated in 1626 by Pope Urban VIII, exactly 1300 years after the consecration of the first church. The 149-foot high facade is crowned with 19-foot tall statues of Christ, John the Baptist, and the Apostles, except for St. Peter and St. Paul who are at the foot of the steps. On either side are huge clocks supported by angels and decorated with ornaments and the papal crest. They were added in the late 18th century and are the work of Giuseppe Valadier. The one on the left shows the exact time in Rome, and the one on the right, which has a single hand, European mean time. They recall that the church lives on in time and that Christ will be with her until the end of time. Beneath the clock on the left is the Campanoni, or Great Bell of St. Peter's, which weighs 441 pounds. It was cast by Luigi Valadier and blessed by Pius VI in 1786. It is rung at Christmas and Easter and every time the Pope imparts the To the City and To the World blessing. Originally, two of Bernini's monumental towers were to stand on either side of the basilica. However, these towers were never executed above the line of the facade because it was discovered that the ground was not sufficiently stable to bear the weight. Instead, the Valadier clocks were installed. The Latin inscription reads, In honor of the Prince of the Apostles, Paul V Borghese, Supreme Roman Pontiff, in the year 1612, the seventh year of his pontificate. There are nine loges between the columns and the pilasters of the facade. In the center, the loggia of the blessing stands out. It is from here that the election of the new pope is announced. Beneath this loggia is the famous high relief portraying the consignment of the keys by Ambrogio Bonvincino. It shows Jesus who is saying to Peter, I will entrust to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you declare bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you declare loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. At the foot of the steps are two statues, on the left St. Peter and on the right St. Paul, sculpted in 1840 and erected there in 1847 by Pius IX, replacing two smaller statues. 
The Dome of St. Peter's Basilica is the tallest dome in the world. Rising to a height of 448 feet or 137 meters from the floor of the basilica to the top of the external cross. The domes of St. Paul's Cathedral in London and the Capitol building in Washington DC were heavily influenced by its architecture. Pope Julius II wanted to crown the old basilica with a dome. He hired Italian architect Donato Bramante in 1506 to do the job, but Bramante and the Pope died before much could be built. Before his death, Bramante persuaded the Pope to order his rival Michelangelo to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel because he expected Michelangelo, a sculptor, to botch the job. He was wrong. In 1546, Michelangelo gained total control of the construction of St. Peter's Basilica but refused to be paid. Michelangelo designed the dome and after he died, work was taken over by his pupil, Giacomo della Porta, who completed it in 1590. To support the giant dome, Builders placed three iron rings within the masonry, but there was still too much tension which caused cracks at the dome's base. By the early 18th century, Vatican engineers had to add several more rings as an emergency fix. St. Peter's Square, which has an elliptical shape, was created in the mid-17th century by Italian master John Lorenzo Bernini, who laid it out during the pontificates of Alexander VII and Clement IX. The square is bordered by massive colonnades that symbolize outstretched arms. Bernini and his assistants sculpted the 140 statues of saints that graced the balustrades on the colonnades. The square is decorated with fountains and an Egyptian obelisk that was transported to Rome in 37 AD. You can attend the papal audience here every Wednesday if the Pope is in town. Every Sunday you can see and hear the Pope give blessings from the balcony of his apartment. The Pontifical Swiss Guard is a small force, about 135 soldiers, maintained by the Holy See that is responsible for the safety of the Pope. The Swiss Guard serves as the de facto military of Vatican City and is often referred to as the smallest army in the world. Established in 1506 under Pope Julius II, the Pontifical Swiss Guard is among the oldest military units in continuous operation. The dress uniform of blue, red, orange and yellow has a distinctly Renaissance appearance. There are some who believe that Michelangelo designed the uniforms. He did not. The Swiss Guard is equipped with traditional weapons as well as with modern firearms and small arms. Recruits to the guards must be unmarried Swiss Catholic males between 19 and 30 years of age who have completed basic training with the Swiss Armed Forces and must be over 5 foot 8 and a half inches tall. This year, after over 500 years, the Swiss Guard will receive new and modernized helmets. There were several doors in St. Peter's Basilica. This is the Holy Door. In 1947, a competition was announced to create bronze doors to replace the wooden ones. The Holy Door was created by Vico Consorti from 1948 to 1950 and is comprised of 16 panels divided by the coat of arms of the 36 popes who celebrated the ordinary holy years. It is cemented shut and only open for jubilee years which occur every 25 years, the last one being in 2000. The door is also called the Door of the Great Pardon because its panels contain scenes of man's sin and his redemption through God's mercy. The atrium was designed by Carlo Moderno and was completed from 1608 to 1612. The vault or ceiling contains 32 scenes decorated in stucco made by Giovanni Battista Ricci. The scenes narrate the story of the apostles Peter and Paul. St. Peter's Basilica may be the most important church in Christianity, but once you enter its doors, you also realize that you're in one of the most magnificent museums in the world with priceless works created by Renaissance masters like Michelangelo and Bernini over the course of a hundred years. In fact, there is even a story about Pope John Paul II telling a tour guide that St. Peter's was becoming more of a museum than a church. The works of art are overwhelming to look at, but once you know the history behind them and their symbolism, you get a much better sense of what it all means. Now here's a surprise. Pretty much whenever you think you're seeing a painting, you're actually looking at a mosaic made up of tiny pieces of glass. The mosaics in the various chapels are based mostly on existing paintings. The Pieta, or the Pity is one of Michelangelo's early works. The sculpture was originally made for a French cardinal's funeral monument. Michelangelo purposely wanted to stress the youth of the Madonna going against tradition. In the sculpture, she shows her grief for her son's death, who is gently lying in her arms, almost weightless. 
The figure of Christ does not bear any wounds as realists would have wanted. He represents the perfect humanity of God-man, not deformed by death or wounds. In 1972, a deranged Hungarian-born geologist, shouting, I am Jesus Christ, I have risen from the dead, attacked the sculpture with a hammer, damaging Mary's arm and nose, parts of which had to be reconstructed. The holy water fonts were made from 1722 to 1725. They offer the holy water so that those who enter can make the sign of the cross in memory of their own baptism. The central nave is an extension made by Carlo Moderno in 1609. St. Peter's Basilica has an interior nave length of just over 693 feet, or 211 meters, covering an area of about 50,000 square feet, and it's large enough to hold 60,000 people. It used to be the largest Christian church in the world, but in 1989 it was exceeded in size by a church in the Ivory Coast, Africa. The papal altar is reserved for the Pope or someone designated by him. It faces east toward the rising sun. It was commissioned by Clement VIII to complete the already finished part of the new basilica. He consecrated the new altar in 1594. The four sides of the altar are standing on four pedestals of white marble. Rising above the altar is the 95-foot high baldachin of Baldacchino. The canopy masterpiece was created by Italian master John Lorenzo Bernini. It took him nine years to make it, from 1624 to 1633, and it's made up of 100,000 pounds of bronze. The four 20-foot twisted columns are adorned with sprigs of olive and bay, among which the figures of cherubs appear. Inside the ciborium, or vessel, is a dove, the symbol of the Holy Spirit, and a burst of golden rays. Above the frieze on each capital, four angels offer garlands, while between them couples of smaller angels support the Pope's emblems the keys, the tiara, the book, and the sword. The cross is set on a golden globe. The ancient tomb of St. Peter lies directly below the altar. In 1603, Clement VII commissioned Giuseppe Cesari to carry out the upper part of the dome decoration. He prepared cartoons from 1603 to 1612. His drawings were then simultaneously transposed into mosaic by the best mosaic artist of the period. Above the windows, the dome is decorated by majestic figures on six ascending levels. Starting at the bottom, the figures portray bust of the 16 popes buried in the basilica, majestic figures of Christ, the Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, St. John the Baptist, and various apostles. In the rectangular frames, angels bearing the instruments of Jesus' passion. The faces of cherubs in circular medallions. Angels, the custodians of St. Peter's tomb. And additional faces of winged angels. Above the 96 figures is a blue sky with stars, and above it the lantern at whose base is a Latin inscription. To the glory of St. Peter, Pope Sixtus V in the year 1590, the fifth of his pontificate. At the very top is the figure of God the Father. Before Bramante, who was the original architect of the dome, died, Michelangelo had observed that the workmen were not properly mixing the material for the piers, which are solid supports that hold vertical pressure. The workers were adding too much sand in relation to the amount of cement that was used. Michelangelo reported this to Bramante, but Bramante refused to listen. Shortly after Bramante's death, cracks began to appear in the piers, but Michelangelo fixed the problem. 
Italian master painter and architect Raphael succeeded Bramante as the head architect from 1520 to 1546, but for most of this period, all work was blocked because of the economic difficulties of the church. This is the Cathedra Petri, Latin for the Chair of St. Peter. It's also known as the Throne of St. Peter. Every year on February 22nd, the church celebrates the Feast of the Chair of St. Peter to commemorate St. Peter's teaching in Rome. Already in the second half of the 18th century, an ancient wooden chair inlaid with ivory was traditionally held to be the Episcopal chair on which St. Peter sat as he instructed the faithful in Rome. In fact, it is a throne in which fragments of acacia wood are visible, which could be part of the original chair of St. Peter, encased in oak and reinforced with iron bands. Pope Alexander VII commissioned Bernini to build a large monument which would give prominence to this ancient wooden chair. Bernini built a throne in gilded bronze, richly ornamented with bas reliefs, in which the chair was enclosed, two pieces of furniture, one within the other. The base of the altar is made of black and white marble and red jasper. Four large statues in gilded bronze surround the chair, which looks almost as if it were suspended amidst the clouds. The two outer statues are figures of two doctors of the Latin church, St. Ambrose and St. Augustine. The two inner statues with bare heads are of two doctors of the Greek church, St. Athanasius and St. John Chrysostom. Above the chair are two angels bearing the tiara and keys, symbols of the Roman pontiff's authority. On the chair are three bas reliefs picked out in gold, which refer to the same number of gospel episodes, the consignment of the keys, feed my sheep, and the washing of the feet. The whole composition is crowned by the gilt and stucco Gloria, populated by a host of angels among rays of light and gigantic billowing clouds. The composition of Bernini's masterpiece leads us to imagine that we can see the celestial heavens. In their midst is the window of Bohemian glass, divided into 12 sections as a tribute to the 12 apostles. A brilliant dove stands out against it, the symbol of the Holy Spirit, the soul of the church which he never ceases to help and to guide. On the bronze statue of St. Peter, created by Anafo di Cambrio around 1300, St. Peter's left hand holds the keys, his right hand is blessing. The right foot stretches out and has been worn by the kissing and touching of the faithful. Above the statue is a mosaic with a portrait of Pope Pius IX. He was the first pope in history to reign for 25 years, an anniversary which he celebrated in 1871. Only the Apostle Peter had guided the church for such a long time, and according to tradition, nobody could reign for more than a quarter of a century. The statue of St. Longinus was made by Bernini from 1629 to 1631 on a stucco model, and from 1635 to 1638 on the marble version. Longinus was a Roman soldier who served under Pontius Pilate. When Christ was crucified, it was the soldiers under his supervision who witnessed the crucifixion, which deeply affected Longinus. He believed in Christ. The saint is seen stretching his arms and holding in his right hand the spear which wounded the side of Jesus. Church tradition says that after wounding Christ, he received healing from an eye affliction when blood and water poured from the wound. Saint Sebastian is a Roman martyr, and this work represents his martyrdom. Under Emperor Diocletian, he and many others had been persecuted because of their Christian beliefs. He was known as a plague saint and was thought to have the power to ward off disease. Pope John Paul II died in 2005. His remains were moved to the chapel in 2011. The statue of Pius XII was commissioned by the cardinals he had created and was made by Francesco Messina in 1964. The pope was shown blessing the faithful, clad in papal robes. His gesture also seems to express his desire to put an end to the evil of the Second World War while his expression seems to reiterate his famous sentence, nothing is lost in peace, all can be lost with war. The name Altar of Transfiguration comes from the altarpiece with the Transfiguration of Jesus on Mount Tabor, made in mosaic after an original painting by Raphael. Six artists took nine years to finish the mosaic, finishing in 1767. There are episodes in succession narrated in Mark and Matthew's Gospels, the transfiguration of Christ on Mount Tabor, and the recovery of the boy possessed by the devil. At the top, Christ frees himself in the light between Moses and Elijah in the presence of Peter, James, and John. This is the tomb of Pope Innocent XI, who lived from 1611 to 1689. He was known for lowering taxes in the Papal States and creating a surplus budget. 
Much of his reign was filled with tension with Louis XIV of France. The monument to Pope Leo XII is located above the entrance door to the Chapel of the Relics, later known as St. Nicholas's Chapel. The sculpture was made from 1835 to 1836 and represents the Pope standing and issuing his blessing during the Jubilee of 1825. The monument to Christina of Sweden was designed by Carlo Fontana in 1702. The queen, who bravely converted to Catholicism and abdicated the throne, is shown in a gilt and bronze medallion supported by a crowned skull. The creation of the funeral monument to Pope Alexander VII was supervised by Bernini. It was commissioned by the Pope himself during the first years of his papacy, but he died in 1667 before the work even started. The door is actually a side exit leading into the Vatican State. Bernini transformed the door into a symbolic entrance to eternity by adding a puffed up drapery raised by a skeleton holding an hourglass. Bernini didn't actually do the sculpting, but he worked out the plan, monitoring the sculptors who transferred his drawings to marble. He may have personally done the finishing touches of the Pope's face. The Innocent XII Monument by Filippo della Valle features an urn with a statue of the Pope flanked by the allegorical figures of charity and justice and crowned at the top by two angels which support the coat of arms. The mother holding her sleeping child pays tribute to the Pope who always helped the poor. The funeral monument to the Countess Matilda of Canossa was made by Italian master sculptor John Lorenzo Bernini with the help of several collaborators and was commissioned by Pope Urban VIII in 1633. The Pope had a special memory of this heroic Middle Ages warrior woman and wanted to honor her. Her remains were transferred to St. Peter's Basilica in 1634. If the funeral monument to Pope Innocent VIII looks different from other monuments in St. Peter's, it's because it was the only one to be transferred from the old basilica. It was moved here in 1621. However, when it was reassembled, the sarcophagus holding the Pope, previously on top, was now on the bottom. On the top monument, the Pope's left hand shows the lance that pierced Jesus' side. Next to the pontiff are four cardinal virtues, prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. The upper lunette displays the three theological virtues, faith, hope, and charity. The two statues are symbols of imperial majesty and the equalization of death which strikes all mortals alike. The chief concern of this pope was the promotion of peace among Christian princes. He also unsuccessfully advocated for a great crusade. The sainted Pius X, son of a postman and a seamstress, radiated a holiness which deeply impressed those who came in contact with him. The ordinary Italian people hailed him as a saint, a verdict that was confirmed by the church 40 years after his death. The monument to St. Pius X was planned by the architect Florestano de Fausto and carved by the sculptor Pietro Astori in 1923. The pontiff, carved from the whitest marble, is shown standing, his arms outstretched to the faithful. Around the door and on its panels are beautiful bas-reliefs in bronze, illuminated with gold, recalling episodes from the saint's life. The altarpiece mosaic is the presentation of the Virgin Mary in the temple by her parents. She's portrayed as a little girl joyfully going up the steps to the temple with her parents. She was brought there to be consecrated by God. In order to reach the altars of holocausts, she would go up 15 steps, corresponding to the psalm sung by the Jews while going up the stairs. Mary went up on her own, never looking back at her parents. St. Pius X was the last pope to be canonized. He was a great pope of the 20th century and was known for vigorously opposing modernist interpretations of Catholic doctrine, promoting liturgical reforms in Orthodox theology. He helped restore Christian life by issuing wise laws in the religious education of children, youths, and adults. His catechism gives clear answers to many religious questions. He allowed young children to take communion. 
The monument to Benedict XIV by Pietro Bracci represents the Pope rising from his throne to give his blessing. Below there are allegorical statues of sacred wisdom on the left and disinterestedness on the right. The first figure holds a book in her right hand and has a gilded sun on her breast. The second is flanked by a stout little angel who is offering for acceptance a cornucopia filled with jewels and money. The artist introduced an innovative feature for St. Peter's Basilica. The Pope is seen standing, emphatically giving a blessing which was in sharp contrast to the calm Pope. The act refers to the apostolic blessing given for the Jubilee of 1750. There are 39 so-called founder statues of men and women who founded religious foundations. Here are four of them. St. Bruno was created in 1744. The statue demonstrates the saint's refusal of the bishop's headgear and staff offered by a cherub while his right hand rests on the skull, evoking mortality. St. Ignatius was a 16th century Spanish Basque Catholic priest who was an important force in the Counter-Reformation. St. Cayetan was born in 1487 and spent his life helping the sick and poor in Italy, even performing miracle cures on the sick. St. Juliana Falconeri was born in 1270 and founded the Religious Sisters of the Third Order of the Servites. She belonged to a noble family in Florence and cared for the sick on a daily basis. Since 2001, the altar of St. Jerome has been dedicated to Pope John XXIII. The altarpiece contains the communion of St. Jerome mosaic from 1730, which is a copy of a painting. Beneath the altar is the body of Pope John XXIII. Prior to him becoming Pope, he had been involved in saving Jews during the Holocaust, and while he was Pope, he made efforts to modernize the church. Empress St. Helen by Andrea Bolgi was unveiled before Urban VIII in 1640. Constantine's mother, who converted to Christianity and performed many acts of charity, is represented in a composed posture restrained by the draping. The large cross reminds us of the legend according to which St. Helen found the true cross of the Savior in Jerusalem. The Veronica by Francesco Mochi was unveiled before Pope Urban VIII in 1640 after being worked on for 11 years. Perhaps he took his time because he wanted to, quote, sign his old age with a memorable work, unquote. According to tradition, this is a sedarium, which is Latin for a sweat cloth, used by a pious woman to wipe the blood on Christ's face during his ascent to the Calvary, and his face was imprinted on it. The altar of St. Leo the Great is placed between two black granite columns. He was the first pope to be buried in the ancient St. Peter's and his remains were moved to this altar by Clement XI in 1715. Over the altar is the only marble altarpiece in the basilica which was done by Alessandro Algardi who worked on it from 1645 to 1653. Five marble blocks were used and the story was divided into two sections, the scene in which the pope stops Attila and the supernatural meaning of the event in the presence of Saints Peter and Paul. Here we see Saint Joseph standing near a Byzantine-style cathedral or bishop's throne with his son Jesus in his arms and a lily in bloom in his left hand. An angel flying down from the sky holds a scroll ornament with a mission given to God by Joseph is inscribed. It says, quote, you will be over my house, end quote. A kneeling angel offers him the ship of the church while a young man holds out an olive branch. In 1605, Paul V moved the relics of two apostles under this altar. The monument to Pope Pius VIII by Pietro Tenerani, features the Pope kneeling, accompanied by a statue of Christ enthroned with statues of Saints Peter and Paul. He was imprisoned in 1808 during the French domination of Italy for refusing to take the oath of allegiance to Napoleon. Under the monument is a door leading to the sacristy and treasury museum. 
In this passage is a list of all the popes buried in St. Peter's. Since 1608, the altar of St. Gregory the Great has been preserving the relics of the Holy Pope inside a marble sarcophagus. St. Gregory was the first to define the Pope as servant of God's servants. The mosaic represents a miracle of St. Gregory, done from 1770 to 1772, based on a 1627 painting. In the mosaic, Gregory gives a piece of cloth that was on the tomb of St. Peter to a group of princes who had asked him for some precious relics. They thought the relic was of little value and unhappily returned it to him. St. Gregory prayed, then asked for a knife and pierced the cloth, after which blood miraculously came out, which showed the princes just how important the relic was. The monument to Pope Pius VII, who was Pope from 1800 to 1823, is by Danish sculptor Bertel Thorvaldsen. Like his predecessor, Pius VII endured imprisonment by Napoleon. He restored the Jesuit order in 1814. His Secretary of State, Cardinal Consalvi, commissioned this monument by Torvaldsen, who was the only Protestant sculptor in St. Peter's. The papal throne is flanked by two angels, at the sides on separate bases, or divine fortitude, wearing a lion's skin and with her arms gathered to her breast, and wisdom, crowned with oak leaves and with her eyes cast down. The altarpiece of the Altar of the Lie is a 1725 to 1726 mosaic work representing the punishment of the couple Ananias and Sapphira. It's based on a 1604 original painting. This altarpiece depicts the story in the Acts of the Apostles of the couple punished for withholding money that they had promised to the Apostles and for lying to St. Peter. After lying to St. Peter, Sapphira fell to the ground before the Apostle. In the background, two young men carried the dead body of her husband, Ananias. It is purposely placed in front of the priest as he leaves to celebrate Mass, a permanent reminder to him that he is called to give himself entirely to God and be a servant to his people, causing any priest to think twice about selfishly withholding from this promise. The Chapel of Baptism was designed by Carlo Fontana, who won a competition among 20 famous artists to design it. The main altarpiece mosaic from 1722 is a copy of an original painting by Marada. It represents the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. The baptismal font is still used on Sundays to administer the sacrament of baptism. The gilded cover rests on a sarcophagus cover used by the Emperor Otto II and is believed to come from the tomb of Emperor Hadrian. The monument to the Stuarts was planned as a pyramidal funeral monument and was finished in marble in 1829 by Antonio Canova. It celebrates the last three Stuarts of English royalty, James III and his two sons. Here are their busts, in addition to two angels who blow out the life flame with their upside down torches, symbolizing the quiet Christian submission to death. <laughs> Well, that's the end of our St. Peter's Basilica and St. Peter's Square tour. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching Andy's awesome adventures.